Hopefully at this point, you're excited about keyword spotting, not from general keyword spotting in English only, but perhaps keyword spotting in your native language. That's an exciting thought that you and I should be thinking about. How do we do that? What's the problem in being able to do that today? It's the data set. Do we have a speech command data set for your language? They sure don't have it for my language, which is Hindi. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about what's the real problem here. It's called the long tail. If you want to collect data that's really diverse, which means that you have to consider many, many different kinds of people and their accents and the nuances of how they say things, then the data will diminish really fast. But if you're talking about just English, for instance, there's a large wealth of data here that you can tap into. And that's effectively the long tail problem. The long tail becomes a really an interesting problem if you want to do something like keyword spotting for many different kinds of languages. So I'm showing you a picture on the left that you will recognize immediately in terms of the different languages that are there and their population clearly you know, indicates the size of the circle. And you'll see for some languages, there's a large number of people that you can tap into to get the data. But for many other languages, you don't have that many people. There are over 7,000 languages spoken on this planet. The question is this, how can we enable speech commands for all of them? Wouldn't it be cool to say Alexa or OK Google or some in some sort of native language, and then the machine responds back in the native language? That would be a very different experience. We might be able to come with this all, with all kinds of different use cases. Let's also think about applications of keyword spotting beyond voice assistance. Let's say there's a virus out there that's spreading across these villages in a certain region. And the one base technology that's almost, you know, in all different places have is access to is radio. It's, a per, it's pervasive across the planet. So now imagine if you're able to train a keyword spotting uh, engine in a certain language to get it to detect certain keywords. Let's say they want to figure out how much of a problem we think that there's a certain virus in a, in a village and build a map, an overall map of the region for the whole collection of different villages. Imagine if we could train the keyword spotting model and put it in front of a radio and tune it to different regions or different villages where the signals are coming from. Then the keyword spotting model is going to be able to pick up keywords, let's say like virus or COVID or something like that. And when it picks it up, you can start to understand the situation in each village without explicitly having to have doctors and nurses go across to the region, which is very costly and extremely hard to do, especially in developing countries. So that's a very creative example of trying to use keyword spotting for something outside of voice assistance. This is why I think it's extremely important to build speech commands, sort of data sets, you know, small little data sets for a variety of different languages that we have across the planet. Now, how do we go about doing this? Obviously, you know, at this point, you know how we can do one of these two things. One is you can either pay in someone in order to get, you know, someone to actually do the labeling, contribute that voice, or we can do crowdsourcing the way Pete did for speech commands and rely on volunteers who actually contribute the data. What's the difference between the two? Well, if you want to be able to pay for all the different languages, it's going to be really costly and it's, you know, it's limited at scale right now. Someone needs to be you know, either philanthropically interested in contributing for the whole planet. Maybe it's the Gates Foundation, but it's still a lot to ask for any one organization. So more than likely the left-hand side approach is not going to work. Paying in order to try and build data sets has very limited applicability unless it's a, there's a business proposition around it. The example I gave you is not so much as a business proposition, it's much more about doing social good. So we have to rely on the community to actually help us build these data sets because if we can rely on the community the way Pete did and give them a good cause or a good motivation, it's more likely that we'll be able to build it and build it in a very diverse manner. And that's where I want to introduce Common Voice to you. Common Voice is effectively a crowdsourcing platform that allows people to actually contribute speech. And the way you do this is by simply going to a website and you click on speak at the top left and a certain sentence or a certain keyword is given to you and you record it. And this is uh, very similar to the experience that Pete did. It's exactly you know, what we were talking about previously when I said you put up a website and people contributed. Then how do they validate it? 
well, there's a listen mode, and there's where you know a certain statement shows up uh, that is supposed to be that's recorded, and when you click play, and whoever previously contributed, their voice will be playing. And you'll be listening to it and looking at the text and saying, check, okay, yes, this is you know right or no, this is not right. And so that's the validation stage. This effectively is what Common Voice does. It's an infrastructure that's out there that helps us build you know, sets of speech data sets. And uh, like we are looking at right now in English over here. Oh, but you can also extend this to many different people, different languages out there. And so Common Voice is a platform that's out for the public good. Uh, over 50,000 volunteers have already contributed speech in there. And now you might be wondering, why am I suddenly talking about this new platform, you know, or it's a different platform? Because we've already got speech commands. So what's so special about Common Voice? Well, the interesting thing is that there are over 54 different languages, and these are all different languages that people have contributed to. What I'm trying to do here is introduce you to two things. One is a very specific instantiation of a platform that you can actually use to build data sets. Two, I'm trying to get you to understand how you can build data sets. You need to know the right tools and the mechanisms that are out there. And Common Voice is you know, one repository from which you can get this data. So what Common Voice has is validated data sets. People have contributed it where someone has to then go and then verify it's correct. Some people listen to it and they say, yes, this is exactly what's supposed to be. And, there's, and there are going to be recordings then that are also invalid. And then also where some people said yes, and then you know, it's actually not correct. And finally, there are others where people have said, yes, this is correct. And others have said, no, this is not correct. And so there's a bucket for that too. Some of the very interesting and important aspects are that it has a permissive license, which means that you and I can use it for commercial purposes or research related purposes and so forth. And there are many contributors, as I said earlier, and it comes with metadata, which is extremely important. Metadata for a data set is like a nutrition sticker. Uh, that is at the back of every food item that you buy, which tells you that how much sugar there is, how much fat there is, and so forth. Metadata is very similar to that. It's specific to that data set and actually talks about the internals of the data set. And we'll get you know, more into that. Then, of course, there is a you know, specific data set of common voice that's very relevant to us, which is a single word target segment. And uh, this is almost exactly like the speech commands data set, which is something that we've already talked about. Pete pioneered that idea before, uh, two years before, and here we have it now also in this case. The interesting aspect of this is that it supports multiple languages, not just English, which is a key thing that I was trying to get to in this video about talking about different languages for people across the planet. There are over 18 different languages today for uh, the, the single keyword uh, data set and it's continued to grow remarkably. The languages are effectively capturing a set of keywords. In this case, it happens to be yes, no, hey, Firefox, Firefox, the web browser. Reason is because Common Voice is part of the Mozilla Foundation, which is also what uh, Firefox is supported by. It also captures digits zero through nine. So if you're excited about this, you know, get yourself and get your friends and everybody out there to go to Common Voice and potentially contribute because you can make the world a better place by having additional data that actually ties to specific you know, new languages. Finally, let's consider the structure of the data capture pipeline. So Common Voice has yes, no, and there's a notion of a prompt. What's uh, the prompt that we want to have? Like then, you know, across there's the feature of recording the data that's actually important here. How do we actually record the data? And then what are the attributes that are actually captured inside of that data? How do we then go ahead and validate that data? We've got to know, you know, which of the recordings are actually valid and which of the recordings are actually invalid. And then use that to create data splits for tests, training, and the validation sets. So hopefully in this video, what you understand is that, hey, we started with speech commands, which is just in English, but now there are other mechanisms to build data sets for our own languages that we desire. And there's a method to this madness. And Common Voice is one systematic process, which uses these fundamental building block steps that we talked about. And so we can all contribute to it, and then potentially we can use the data set to train you know, custom 
keyword spotting models. 